this video, I'm going to show you how to make this very simple bubble head or big head effect in Photoshop. So when you're picking your image, make sure you try and pick one, if you want it to be easy, to pick one that you can see all the way around your subject's head and that it has a collar like this one or like this one, right? You can see all the way around her head and there's a collar right here. But just so you know, I show you two different ways to do a big head bobble head effect in this video. One way is to, like I just said, keep the neck the proper size and match up the collars like this one, which I really explain in detail. And at the end, I do a quick version of how to make it so it's just the head that's bigger and not the neck or the collar. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is make more headspace up here for my image. If you have an image, like if you have one that has a lot of headspace up here, there's still a lot of image, then you don't have to do this step, you can skip ahead. But if yours is like mine, where there's not a lot of space above the head, then we're gonna have to add more space up here on the canvas, because once we make the head bigger, we're gonna need more space. So to do that, we're gonna go up to image, and then go to canvas size, and I would say add like, I don't know, 15, 20% or something. So I'm just gonna add, this is 5,500 about. I'm gonna make mine 6,500 just in the height because we need it just up here, not the width. And click OK, and it's gonna make this. It's gonna kind of distribute it evenly on the top and the bottom. So now I have to go over to my background layer, my image, and unlock it. Just click on the lock and go to my move tool over here, click on my image, and I can use my arrow keys to like bring it down or you can just click it and slide it down. I'm gonna go further than what the image is, so maybe about right there, and that's good enough for the amount of headspace. But now you can see that, well, how do we fill this in with background here? We need to fill it in with the background. So it's actually pretty easy. I'm gonna show you what I tried first. So I went to my rectangular marquee here and I made a box like this and I went over to edit, fill and I made sure my contents was content aware and that'll kind of analyze the image and fill it in accordingly. So click OK and you'll see it's kind of processing and filling it up and boom, ugly. It made these edges all like crazy ugly. So I'm gonna undo that. So then what I did was I tried just the lasso tool. So I just went over here and I kind of drew a cross and then out here I made sure I was all the way to the outside so it was going right along the edge and went right back to the start, let go, made a similar selection to this one, but now watch when I go to edit, fill, content aware, and you'll see that it does a much better job and makes the background look almost perfect, like seamless, right? Just look at this, just great fall off right there of this kind of highlight or shot, whatever this is here, looks fantastic. Okay, so now that you have that, we're gonna go to our layer, our image layer, and go Control J to duplicate it, and we're gonna call this one head. And this is the layer that we need to separate. Like we need to cut out the head and all the way down to just kind of beyond the collar. So we're gonna use this, the fourth tool down here, one, two, three, four, which is the quick selection tool. If you don't see it, right click, it might be magic wand tool or something. So click on this one, quick selection tool, and then go up here to select subject. Now usually Photoshop does a really good job of selecting subjects like this. This one did a really good job, but if yours messes up, then you might wanna zoom in and use these plus and minuses. So let's just pretend I'm gonna use the minus. Let's pretend you had a chunk missing like that. Then you go to the plus to add it back into your selection. So just kind of paint over it to get it back into the selection. If you had an extra chunk like this, then you'd use minus to shrink it back down to be the proper selection right there. So the only thing that I see really that I care about is maybe this neck right here. So I'm gonna just kind of paint that back in right there and the rest of it looks pretty good. So then I'm gonna go up here to select and mask and that gives me kind of a better look at what I've selected and I don't really care down here because I'm just going to the collar anyway. So I'm just looking at the head and really the only thing that I might do if I needed to, in this case, I don't need to. Mine looks pretty good, but you might want to feather, you know, just a touch, maybe even smooth it out. And sometimes you might have to shift the edge back just a little bit to uh, to get a better selection. When you have what you want, just go down to here to output two and change selection to layer mask and click OK. And you're gonna notice that kind of nothing happens because we still have the background here selected. So I'm gonna click the eyeball here to get rid of it. And you'll see that this mask that we put on that the white is what's still left from our image 
and the black is what's been covered up or kind of erased. Not really erased, but has the illusion of being erased. So with that in mind, we're gonna actually use a brush that's a black brush. So down here, make sure it's black. If you need to use this arrow thing to flick it to black in the foreground here and select a fairly large brush with a fairly high hardness and you're just gonna go and, actually I need a bigger brush than that, and you're just gonna go and erase the body as well. Oh, also, see how this is kinda see-through there? Make sure your opacity is all the way up to 100 as well. So you can really just erase everything. So I'm gonna erase all the way up to there really quick, and then I'll take my time around the collar, and I'll probably, around the collar, I'm gonna drop my hardness down and go in here and just have it a little more faded along that edge right there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And then we'll zoom out, bring the background back. And again, it'll look like nothing happened. But now we're going to click over on the thumbnail side, not on the mask anymore, but on the thumbnail side here, and go control T. And that'll allow us to go to the corner and stretch out the head layer here to make it bigger. Now, all that you're looking for is that you just can't make it like larger so it's wider than the actual body right here. So I have to kind of bring this back to kind of make it the same width as the body. So I'm going to go to about there probably. No, bring this one back. And then I'm just going to use the, I'm going to click on it and kind of drag it down. Don't worry about anything that's sticking out here. You're just trying to line up kind of this shoulder and this shoulder. So I'm going to have to shrink it just a little bit more once I brought it down to there. When you have it at a reasonable spot, then just click check to place it. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is blend the shirts. So we wanna keep as much as we can from the collar right here, this defined collar, and then kind of blend it into the other shirt. It's a little bit too harsh right now. Okay, so I'm gonna click on the mask. And if you remember that white is what we still have left and black is what is erased or covered up. So I'm gonna use a brush over here and make sure that black is in the front and I'm gonna use a fairly large brush with the hardness very low. So it's got a blurry edge to it and maybe even drop my opacity to around 50%. And then what you're gonna notice is on this one, I'm trying to erase this part basically by covering it up with black. So I'm gonna erase kind of all in here to try and just really blend the two shirts to make it look like it's one shirt. So over there is pretty good. And then kind of, oh, I don't want to do that because I erased too much there. So in this corner here, I'm going to zoom in and just drop the size of my brush down so it kind of fits in here, maybe a little bit bigger, and drop my hardness right down. So if you make the brush smaller, then drop the hardness down even more. And I'm just going to kind of paint in this little corner right here. There's this little jut out there that's the pocket that I want to kind of keep. And I'm just going to kind of paint in there like that. Now, if I click the eyeball here to hide the top one, we can see that that's the pocket from the bottom one and just paint over it. Because remember, I'm at 50%. So I'm going to paint over it once. I'm going to paint over it again to just keep trying to bring it to be like a stronger look for it here. So that's this edge is going to be, I'm going to deal with that after. Okay. So painted that pocket back in. That looks better. So that's pretty good. The blend from this, the collar to the shirt looks pretty good. And then the last thing that we're gonna do is just get rid of these extra chunks right here. So to do that, you have to click on your background layer and just in case, we're gonna go Control J to duplicate it. And this one, we're just gonna keep just in case underneath. And then this one right here, we're gonna use the clone stamp tool. So right underneath the brush is this one right here. If you don't see it, it might be the pattern stamp. Just use clone stamp. And basically all this tool does is if you hold alt, then it makes this target. And that's, you're gonna take a sample of whatever you click on. So you're gonna hold alt to make the target and then you're gonna left click to make a sample. So I clicked to make a sample and then that becomes my brush. So you can see that that sample is now my brush. But you can't just paint away. Cause look, if I paint here and I paint to the side, it's just like, duplicating from that spot. It's not gonna stay as that the whole time. It's mimicking from that spot over. So if I kept painting, you'll see that it'll duplicate wherever I was from that spot and then all around. So I'm gonna undo that, obviously. So once you hold Alt and you take your sample, and you should take a sample close to any parts that you wanna get rid of, then you're just gonna start by just painting over them. Don't go too far, just paint over it. And then if you 
end up erasing, like covering up some of the, the body here, like in my shirt, that's okay. We'll fix that up in a second, okay? So just paint out the obvious parts that you need that are missing. I'm gonna go over here, hold Alt, take a sample from here, and then paint in this part. This one should be a lot easier. Just kind of paints out. So I, I'm gonna just paint in here because you can see that I made a mistake, just on purpose, just making a mistake right there. Now, to fix these ones up, we're gonna do something a little bit different. Instead of going back up here, we're actually going to just erase from here by putting another mask on. So now I have a mask on this one and I'm gonna use a black brush again and I'm just gonna paint in that area once again, bring my hardness up a little bit and my brush size up and actually my hardness, I'm gonna bring up quite a bit into around 80% and then I'm just gonna paint in the part that I need to bring back. And you might have to go over it a few times because I'm still on opacity 50%. But basically what that's doing is if you see on the mask, it's basically putting a hole in this layer to reveal this one, our original one down here. So in, for this one, I'm gonna have to zoom in and make a smaller brush, bring it way down so I can get right in here. And I'm just gonna, again, just I'm painting a hole in this layer to bring back the one underneath. So I'll bring that up just a little bit, paint over here, bring back that edge and the pocket right here and then this last little bit leading up to the collar i'm just going to make a smaller brush and paint that in and that's it that's how you make a big giant bobblehead effect thing in photoshop now i'm just going to show you how to make a much simpler version by just increasing the size of the head not the neck or collar or anything as you can see i've already dealt with making more headspace up here by doing content aware fill up top here and we're just ready to go. So I'm gonna click on this layer and go Control J to duplicate. I'm gonna go over to the quick selection tool, go to select subject, let it do its thing right here, put a mask on it, hide the background, get over to a big black brush with the hardness way up, and I'm gonna erase all of this really quick. Once you've erased up to the neck, then just decrease the size of your brush a little bit and the hardness a little bit. And you're just going to paint around the chin. Take a lot longer than I am right now. I'm just going really quick to show you. So if you need to, like that's probably too much of a blurry edge there. So I'd probably go back here, increase this a little bit, and then flip this to white to kind of bring back some of the hardness of the edge of the chin there. If you make a mistake, just flip back to black and continue to kind of refine that edge until you get it the way that you want. Okay, then you're gonna zoom out, bring back your background, click on your thumbnail layer, go Control T and just simply resize it. So I'm gonna make this one bigger like that. I'll zoom out more, get it to the size that you want, click check and whoops undo that go to your move tool and put it where you want it so i'm going to go as high up as i can until i see the original chin right there and there you go that's the kind of simple way to do the big head effect as well if you got something out of this video make sure to drop a like and if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing and i'll catch you next time